watching the first two episodes of this particular series, I'm going to go ahead and actually say this is definitely its own thing. But if I'm going to have to give you a vibe check for what a casual person needs to kind of understand or what this series is like in order to kind of know what they're getting into it, I would go and actually say that this is kind of like a cross between The Wire meets Law and Order Criminal Intent. Those are the two franchises that I really think are kind of uh, getting a lot of, this is the, the morphing of those franchises. So that's what- You think you can stop him? I know I can. Because I know him better than he knows himself. With the crime series cross premiering on Prime Video in November of 2024, it's a season that actually consists of 11 episodes and they range roughly around about 50 to 55 minutes each. These episodes are inspired by the successful Alex Cross detective series created by James Patterson. And it stars Aldous Hodge as Alex Cross, Isaiah Mustafa as Detective John Sampson, and Juanita Jennings as Regina Nana Mama Cross. IMDb has a synopsis this way. A series adaptation of James Patterson novels about the complicated and brilliant detective Alex Cross. Now, not a complex synopsis because there are so many novels. If you look up James Patterson's library guarding Alex Cross, you will see there are plenty of novels that has made this man rich and for good cause. Now, in regards to series and the way that I take it, Detective series are a staple of good TV. Whether you're looking at legacy network detective shows like Will Trent or Criminal Minds, or even with cable TV with, with like Monk and Psych, or even streaming platform only shows like Only Murders in the Building or High Potential. Detective shows cross genres of police shows, crime, mystery, drama, comedy, thrillers, or horror. All of those can be combined and be a successful detective story. Now for me, I love all kinds. Now this particular series is a character driven series behind one of those kind of like super smart detectives. Uh, one that leans into conspiracies, character development, and connecting the dots. You have to be willing to go ahead and actually go along with the ride in order to really piece together the story that's being told. Aldous Hodge is the third iteration of bringing Alex Cross to live action. There was the Morgan Freeman in the movies Along Came a Spider and Kiss the Girls. And that I will go ahead and actually say was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. They were okay. Kind of depends on what your flavor was. But it's Morgan Freeman so you can't really argue with it. Then there was a Tyler Perry Alex Cross movie that came out a few years ago. And I will just tell you that was just not good at all. Just my opinion, just not really a worthy successor to the Alex Cross series. When I look at the character of Alex Cross, I like who the character is supposed to be. It's a detective that has personality flaws and their flaws actually become their strengths as a detective. And so when you go and actually bring it about, it makes it as someone has to kind of, they have to embrace their flaws in order to be successful. But having those flaws flaunted out there can be detrimental to them personally. And so when you go and actually bring a character like that to life, there is that fine line of crossing in between being a good guy and bad guy, kind of like an anthropologist. Uh, an anti-hero a little bit or trying to not be a vigilante or what have you and so the alex cross character really kind of blurs that line at times so when i go ahead and actually look at this particular series when it includes aldis hodge who is one of my favorite actors going right now and it is a detective story i'm the target audience member for this i'm all about this life so they're looking at me when they go and actually create something like this. The reason why I go ahead and actually let you know that I'm the target audience is that you should always know what slant that your reviewer has when they're going and actually reviewing a series or movie. 
I watch the first two episodes of brand new streaming content on streaming platforms to see if it's worth your time. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let's take a deeper look at Cross. So some of the notes that I actually have in regards to the first two seasons of this show are that they're really in the very first episode, they hit you with like a very impactful event that affects Alex Cross for the duration of the series. And so this is really going to feed into it. it doesn't like, it's not like they go all the way back to like him being an academy or something like that, but it gets you hit with this major life event right away so that you can go and actually really kind of understand what psychological pressure he's under and how that affects him going through the rest of the series. The aspect of Alex Cross being a father is really good in this scenario because a lot of times you'll see detective shows where the super smart detective is usually like a, a widower or a, uh, uh, a bachelor or whatever the case may be. And they don't have anybody at home to really kind of soften them or what have you or to even consider overall. Maybe they have a romantic interest that they're off and on with and all that kind of jazz. But here we actually get more character development that forces Alex Cross to think beyond himself. And I like that. One of the things that they do in the Cross series is there's this growing trend in television where they make like department heads or like police uh, lieutenants and captains and uh, commissioners and all these kinds of people like the higher up people they're making them either dumb and or antagonistic towards our main characters and i get it to a certain point that you know you're giving them something to kind of play off of but you can actually make those people kind of benign like they're just doing their jobs without making them seem stupid and or uh, antagonistic all the time i just think it's a tire trope and cross kind of continues that same shtick in there and i'm not a fan of it and that's occurring in this particular series i also noticed that my guy ryan eggled eagled i'm probably murdering his name but he's back as a regular character actor um after years on blacklist and if you watch blacklist if you're a fan of that you recognize him as being tom from blacklist and he's back in this particular series i don't know how long he's going to be in it but I'm glad to have him there because he's perfectly cast in this particular series. Both of these episodes had really good cliffhangers on them. And it was a very well-written uh, conclusion up there. Like each one kind of had its like build up to it too. You just felt like, ah, I got to watch the next episode. And that is definitely important in today's society in regards to like streaming platforms. You want to go and actually binge it and things like that. And they made uh, both episodes really good cliffhangers. So those are some notes that I actually had in watching the two episodes. Uh, for me, first and foremost, let me grade the storytelling. So the storytelling for me is about an A minus. Uh, the reason why I have it as A minus is that the pacing of this series is really good. Uh, they don't linger on scenes too long. There are some scenes that are designed to kind of bring down some of the intensity and 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 levels of. Uh, high uh, emotions or what have you because alex cross is an intense character so sometimes they kind of bring it down a little bit but there's purpose to it as he's always kind of living in the area of always being aware of everyone and everything around him he's just always on 10 or what have you so being able to kind of bring that energy down some there sometimes really kind of makes sense i like the interweaving of connected cases and how it naturally brings cross into it it doesn't seem like things are kind of like far-fetched or you know why is he here for this particular case there's a natural progression for everything on there and i like the way that they wrote that in there the only thing that brings this down again and mentioning it again is that how they kind of dumb down uh some of the other supporting characters and some of the police personnel there that just kind of rubs me the wrong way now there's it's hard to kind of talk about why some of this stuff happens without spoiling it but there are some relationships that i could go and actually do without that I think aren't necessary to go and actually tell this story. Again, I haven't read, I think I've read like maybe two of the novels by James Patterson. So some of these 
characters may develop and morph into something else or what have you, and they might be necessary, or they may be developing strictly for television series. I'm not entirely sure, but right now there's a couple of relationships that I'm just like, eh, do we really need this or what have you? But overall, it's not like they're harmful. It's just I could go and actually do without them. In regards to acting, acting, I'm going to give it a solid A. Uh, Aldous Hodges is the right man to play Alex Cross. He brings the look of intelligence, arrogance, strength, compassion, all that. He's able to portray all of that, and he does it so smooth. Uh, he chews up a lot in his scenes on there just by certain looks and the way he carries himself smooth with it. Uh, Ryan Eggold uh, as one of his antagonists is really good. He's a great person to go and play opposite Alex Cross. I do not think that they've actually shared a scene or anything like that, but it was still uh, really good to go ahead and actually see that acting. Uh, Isaiah Mustafa as his partner is a perfect way to offset Cross's intensity uh, because very similar to like if you go into like Law and, law and Order Criminal Intent and how uh, how Detective Gorn was very smart but very like intense and, and whatnot and then Eames was there to kind of bring him down a little bit that's kind of like the way that Cross's uh, partner is and so I liked uh, Isaiah in that role and he does a really good job doing that there's definitely a special shout out to uh, Cross's family of uh, the two kids and his Nana I like their characters as well and the other supporting characters are decent but everybody I mentioned so far right there does a really good job very solid A so my final impressions with Cross is that this series is a good evolution of detective series because you're still getting good detective work. Um, you're getting people trying to solve cases, capture the bad guy, all that kind of good stuff. You get that super cop aspect of it a little bit and you get kind of the flawed detective. The additional topics of race in today's society as it relates to the police is on display here. And I think that is something that you can't avoid and a talk about it here but not ad nauseum but they definitely put it to the forefront of anyone who's watching and when you go ahead and actually combine some other emotional human elements like grief parenting struggling with who you think you are versus how people perceive you and things like that all of those elements are in cross and so when you go ahead and actually combine all that you have a series that i think true detective fans are going to want to binge it out and even casuals are going to want to go and actually give it a two episode watch so that's what i have for cross on prime video check it out you're not getting a confession you're not in my head oh i'm definitely living rent free you stay for the entire video i appreciate you i really do do me a favor click like share subscribe if any of this speaks to you you can also go ahead and actually check out one of these other videos that the algorithm seems to think that you might like of mine but until the next time i'll highlight you take care of yourself now that's a happy ending or is it because everything's over now and all that's left is you and the infinite void